Good morning, it's me, Mr. Truman, back for another video in geometry. Today we are doing part one of a two-part series on special right triangles. In this first part, we are going to focus on the 45-45-90 rule, which is a rule that we have that allows us to figure out parts of a 45-45 triangle by using a multiplier that I'll explain here in a moment. So this particular formula you see on most things like the SAT. This formula is on the page, on the booklet in the SAT, uh, on the test booklet. And anyways, it explains that on a 45-45 degree triangle, these two sides are always going to be the same exact length, and their diagonal will be the same as the side, however multiplied by radical 2, or square root 2. So um, before I start using a formula, I want to show exactly why they have the square root of 2 come and where it comes from in this formula. So I thought I would do that by looking at um, just this triangle right here, and I was going to go ahead and solve for both x and y, or maybe I should more appropriate title them b and c, since I'll be using the uh, Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. So let's look at this first one here, and I'm going to show how the square root of 2 comes into play. Now, one thing I should notice about this is when we have a 45-45 triangle, that's showing that we have two angles in common, which means that this must be an isosceles triangle, meaning it must have two sides that are the same because it has two angles that are the same. So with that being said, I can go ahead and just write now and erase that B and go ahead and write in 5 because these have to be the same. Now, if I use Pythagorean's theorem and I go like this, 5 squared plus 5 squared, I get c squared. Then I go ahead and I perform that. Add my like terms and I have 50 equals c squared. If I take the square root of that, I would get a decimal. I'd get approximately 49.8 or 49.9, something like that. But most of the time when we work with problems like this, we're asking that they be left in simplest terms of, or write them in radical form, simplest terms. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't break down 50 into a smaller, maybe a square root that I can solve. So 50 is the square root of 2 times the square root of 25. And I know that the square root of 25 is 5. But I don't have a square root for 2 because it's a prime number, so I'm going to leave it right here. And there's where that, you can see, that square root of 2 comes in. Well, this would happen no matter what number I ever choose, any number I choose and I plug in that spot, I will always end up with these two matching and the third one, the hypotenuse being the same as the other two times a radical two. So it's really arbitrary as to what I put here. It could be five, six, seven, it could be 400. It doesn't really matter. It's always gonna be these two are the same and the last one the square root of two. So let's jump in and look at a couple of examples here of the, uh, that I've drawn up to use this. The first one here, I have a leg of 17. This is also a leg, because if this is 45 degrees, we have to know by subtraction that this is also 45. And so when I know that I have a matching set, I can go ahead and erase this and make this a 17, because these have to be the same. I mean, at the end of the day, this is really just half of a square, and we know that the sides of the square are the same. All right. Now, if I don't want to do Pythagorean theorem and go through all of this, 17 squared plus 17 squared, get it all done, and the answer at the end of the day is just going to be 17 square roots of 2. Because you take the leg and you times it by the square root of 2, and you get the, high, um, the hypotenuse. And it goes for if I say that in reverse. Let's say I have the hypotenuse is 13 square roots of 2. Well, to get it back to being x, to get these two, Instead of multiplying by square root of 2, I just divide. So imagine I got 13 square root of 2. Instead of timesing it, I divide it. These cancel, and I get the 13s. I wanted to show that because sometimes you get problems where you might have to, and I'm going to get to it in a moment, it's a little bit more work to get the answer. All right, well, on number 3, I should have wrote 45 up here. At least 145 would have helped them. So I'll fix that now. That makes this 45. So the first one I forgot, the second one we just know. And if this is a 45, 45, then this one has to be 8 squared to 2. 
Now remember, our formula says whatever you have here in these two positions called the leg, the hypotenuse is that number times a radical two, which means even though I already have a square root of two and a square root of two, I'm still, to get this hypotenuse, I would have to take eight square roots of two and multiply by another square root of two because that's how the formula is laid out. Well, guess what happens when you take a square root of two and you times it by square root of two? Well, that's the square root of four, which is actually two. So it cancels and it makes it a whole number. Two roots make a whole. So the answer ends up being 16. So when you have a square root as a leg, you still have to multiply by square root of two to make it a hypotenuse. I hope you paid close attention to this two numbers and this third hypotenuse, because we're gonna do that problem in reverse. So here we go on number four. I've provided the hypotenuse and I want the leg. And again, I cannot remember to write 45 on these triangles. All right, gotta make my examples a little better. I need to prep myself here. All right, in this case, I give you a hypotenuse of 30 and now I want the legs. Well, remember up here to get to from leg to the hypotenuse, you had to multiply by square root of two. That means to get from the hypotenuse back to the leg, I have to divide by the square root of two. And that's a problem, because when I try to do division like this, it turns out that I have a 30, which is an integer, and then I have, I'm trying to divide it by a radical. And these two just don't play well together. We can't divide, we can't have a radical as a denominator. We can't divide by radicals. So what we do is we call, we call them rationalizing. The reason being is 30 is an integer and two is what you call an irrational number. It's a square root. And we don't divide by integers by square roots. So what we do is we're gonna rationalize it. And the way I do that is I can times this number right here by itself. And because I know that two squares will make a whole. Two square root times two square root gives me the actual number two because that's the square root of four, which is two. But I can't just be doing that to the denominator. I have to do it to the numerator as well. And it leaves me with 30 square roots of two. Well, I can simplify that. I may not be able to divide by square root of two, but I can divide by a regular integer, a number like two. So when I do that, I end up with 15 square roots of two. So you can see the relationship between the last one with eight square roots of two turning into 16. Well, it works in reverse as well. I like to just tell the students in the class that if you know that the, the, the hypotenuse is a whole number or an integer, just divide that number in half and put a square root at the end. And that's kind of the simple way to do it. Not the most mathematical thing to say, but just trying to keep it simple. All right, the last one I want to do here is our school has a our school courtyard has a diagonal path that is 80 yards in length. If the courtyard is a square of what? If the courtyard is a square, what is the exact perimeter? So I'm going to use our Viking pride that we use at school. I'm going to pinpoint what they're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and record some information, illustrate, do it, and examine it. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a courtyard, and I know that it's a square. And they're saying that here, there's a diagonal, better make it an actual square. There's a diagonal path that is 80 yards long. So these are both diagonals, I'll just make it this one. Okay, now I should recognize that when I make a diagonal, I have taken that square courtyard and made 45 tri degree triangles. I have a 45 and a 45, and that makes this one 45, 45. So I can use the 45, 45 rule. And knowing that my hypotenuse is 80, well, if I do that whole 80 divided by the square root of two, we just went over, I end up with 40 square roots of two. And they're all, because it's a square, 40 square roots of two. Now, if I want to know the perimeter, and it says the exact perimeter, I go ahead and I type it in the calculator by starting at the end with the radical, because most calculators, if you're using a basic scientific, you start with the square root two. So two shift square root 
gives me 1.4 blah 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 times 40 is 56.56a blah 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 but there's four of them so just times four and I get our courtyard is 226 approximately 226.3 yards and that's the 45 45 rule I hope this helps bye